Tonight I'm making something quick and easy. I'm just gonna make spaghetti. So I've got a pound of hamburger meat that I'm gonna season up and brown. I'm gonna season it with a little salt and pepper to begin with. Put a little garlic, onion powder, and some oregano. So I'm gonna mix all this up or together and start browning it and then we'll come back in just a little bit and we will add the prego sauce and make up spaghetti tonight so like i said dinner is going to be quick easy i just thought i'd show this it's nothing spectacular but anyway. y'all i'm steaming it up but if you can see this i'm going to use this half length spaghetti um, i'm probably going to use about half the box but i have some boiling hot water and we're just going to add it in there boil it and yeah and I always use lean ground beef, so this meat does not have much fat in it. And y'all, like I said, this is going to be so easy, so simple. You can throw this together in less than probably 20 minutes. And my favorite spaghetti sauce, in case you're new here, is Prego Traditional. I love this sauce. I have tried so many different sauces, and I always come back to the Prego Traditional because it is so good. My noodles are boiling. But anyway, I like to get all of the sauce out. And what I do is I just basically let my sauce simmer while the noodles are cooking. And then that's it. Very, very easy tonight. Stay tuned though. I will have some meals that require a little more effort <laughs> uh, later in the video. It never fails. I either make way too much spaghetti noodles or not enough. Hope that's gonna be enough. We've got our sauce done, and then I made these Texas Toast garlic knots. I might've got them a little bit dark, but I think they'll be okay. So that's our supper. Easy, easy. And earlier, Courtney and my niece made some uh, salted caramel brownies. Look, we've almost ate all them, about half of them. They're good. y'all yes this is a very simple meal but it's one of my favorite i don't know bros how do you like spaghetti spaghetti is spaghetti it's good though right spaghetti i put spaghetti. ranch spaghetti is so good the spaghetti is the delicious it's so delicious mm -hmm. yes spaghetti. how do you like it adrian the best i put the ranch in it good he put ranch now courtney is the oddball she does not like spaghetti sauce so I'm she's a, eating I'm a sauce a veg sausagearian. A mm. sausagearian. That means you only eat sauce. Yeah. I mean, what about the pizza you I'm a noodletarian. Like, oh, okay. Anyway, she just put Parmesan cheese and okay. salt. But anyways. So. Don't judge me. No. Hey. Hey, this is good, though. It. Oh. Girl, chill out. Just kidding. Okay. Um. The Bugatti. The Bugatti? <laughs> You got a Bugatti? My friend, she loves spaghetti. And she calls it garlic yes, knots. I, I, I These are some of Ross's favorites. Mom give me one. They're good. You go but anyways, y'all, simple, easy. And for the Push we have it. some good stuff coming up. Tomorrow's Taco Tuesday. So stay tuned in just a minute. What are we doing for Taco Tuesday? Tonight, I'm going to be making crock pot Mexican shredded beef tacos, or you could use this for burritos or nachos or whatever. It calls for two to three pounds of boneless beef chuck roast, and this is actually a couple pounds. My mother-in-law gave me this meat, and she cut it up into little pieces. Usually, I make beef steak ranchero out of this, but I'm going to try something a little different today. So, we have all that meat already cut up, but we're going to take, I have a little, I'm going to put this down here where y'all can see. I have a little measuring cup here, and I'm going to empty in a four eight, four eight, <laughs> a four ounce can of diced green chilies. So put those in there. I have. I'm going to do a teaspoon of ground cumin. 
And we're gonna put in a teaspoon of minced garlic. And we're gonna put in a tablespoon of chili powder. Uh, chili powder if I can speak. Oops, I'm making a mess y'all. Look at that mess. <clears throat> so a tablespoon of that. We're going to put in a half a teaspoon of salt. Oh shoot, I just put in a whole teaspoon. <laughs> well anyways, it might be a little salty because I used the wrong measuring spoon. And then I'll put in a half a teaspoon of pepper. And now we're going to mix this stuff together real good. And we're going to pour this in here with the meat, mix it up. I'm just going to kind of mix that up with the meat real good. Then we're going to cover this. I'm going to let it cook on low for six hours. And then we'll have some good shredded meat for tacos. And I have another recipe I'm going to do in a cup probably in a week or two that um, I was given by a subscriber. I just didn't do that today. But anyways, there's that. Cover it up. Turn it on low and ready to go. All right, y'all. This has been cooking all day long. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a little taste, but I am almost positive this is going to be done. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm, that tastes good, y'all. So, in the meantime, I'm going to heat up some beans. <laughs> We are going to be making some guacamole salsa. I got this recipe from a subscriber, Asenia. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, she sent me this recipe and I wanted to make it last week, but I could not find any jalapeno peppers. So it calls for three avocados and we're going to cut this up, uh, cut open this, this avocado and put it into my blender. Now it said you could use one to two jalapenos. So I think, which I'm gonna take the seeds out. I'm not gonna keep those, so I'm kinda, I don't know if this will work. Hold on. I'm gonna go ahead and put this other one in. And then we're going to need a handful of cilantro. And I'm going to use my cutter or my chopper thing that I got from Pampered Chef. Well, I didn't get it from there, but my mother-in-law got it for me from there. I'm going to say, is that a handful? That's a handful. <laughs> I'm just using this real lime juice and it says that um, one tablespoon or three tablespoons equals about one um, one lime so there I'm just gonna do that and we may add some more we'll see and it says to add a little salt pepper garlic and onion powder so I'm gonna bring this a little closer ignore all my mess so I'm just gonna kinda throw in some onion powder, some garlic, a little salt, little pepper, and then it said to add like a splash of water. We'll add in a couple tablespoons. We will see what happens. We may have to add more, but we're gonna blend this up until it's to the consistency that you like. And she said that she's from El Paso, and this recipe 
is an authentic salsa recipe that she got from her husband's family who lives in Juarez, Juarez, Mexico. So let's blend it up y'all. And I don't have a fancy blender y'all. I've had this thing forever. Blender sucks. Okay. Watch, my blender probably done gave out. <laughs> I might have to put some more water. We'll figure this out, y'all. Maybe my blender finally just gave up. I think that my blender has finally <laughs> gave out. So I have this small blender here. It's just a portable one. I put a little bit in here and I'm gonna blend it up. I finally got it all mixed up. I added more water and I think it's gonna be good. Actually, I'm gonna take a little taste of it just right here on the top. <clears throat> it's got some spice to it. I need to add some more salt to it. But other than that, I think it's going to be good. And I'm just going to open up a can of these old El Paso um, refried beans. Bryce actually got braces on today. And so I'm not making a big amount of sides and stuff because it's just me and the kids. Um, my husband is out on the road again. And so... Um, we are going to make this up, and that way this will be something. I think even if he can't eat the tortilla shells, that meat is going to be so tender. Even if he just has to eat the meat and these refried beans in case. But he says his mouth doesn't really feel that sore yet, so he may be just fine. But what I like to do with refried beans is I like to add a little bit of like piccani sauce to them. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to, whoops, we're going to warm these up. See, I like to take just some, well, <laughs> we've used this one so much, the tax came off, but I like to add a little bit of that in to my refried beans. Okay, y'all, I'm just going to warm up some of these um, street tacos, the corn, the white corn tortillas. And then what I do with these, I just put like three of them in here and I'll warm those up. And I just take a little kitchen towel like this and I'll wrap the warm ones up in there to kind of keep them warm. And on these, I just kind of flip them. I don't know if I'm doing them the correct way, but this is how I do them. I just kind of, see they're getting a little bit of color. I don't want them to get hard, so that'll probably be fine. And then I will put it in between here. Like y'all can see. Red and gold Christmas And just wrap them up. I know y'all can kind of see my, y'all see my tripod in the way, but that's what I did. Real Here's easy. our meat, our beans, our guacamole salsa, and inside of here are my cor or flour tortillas. My corn tortillas are in here. Have a little bit of cilantro. Um, and then we also have some cheese. Hey y'all, tonight we are going to make mini loaded air fried meatloaves. So I'm starting out with, I'm going to fry up a few pieces of bacon that we're going to put into the meatloaf mixture. And it called for thick cut ba bacon, so if I can speak. So I'm just using this great value thick cut bacon. I'm just going to use my kitchen shears and I'm just going to cut them in half so that I can fit it in here a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking that. I may go ahead and so I only have two, I only have four slices total left in this package. 
So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cook up a couple more, cook these up too, so. Um, two slices or so of this and I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up to put into the meatloaf. I'll just set these over to the side and so that's what I'm gonna quickly do. I thought I'd show you really quickly what the ingredients we're using are. We're gonna use um, three quarters of a cup of cheddar cheese. It called for sharp cheddar, but I did not have any. We're gonna use a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs, three ounces of chili sauce, a quarter of a cup of barbecue sauce, the two slices of bacon that we chopped up. And then over here, we are gonna be using a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of seasoning salt. Then we're gonna use a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce <laughs> and a half a teaspoon of yellow mustard. So we're gonna start adding in all the ingredients except for the barbecue sauce. So there's our bacon, our three, fours, three quarters of a cup of cheese. Oh, I also forgot to tell y'all one egg. It was laying there, I just didn't mention that. So one egg, our quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs, our chili sauce, three ounces of that. I'm gonna get something to help get it out of there. Just use this little spoon thing. And then we're gonna start adding in our seasonings. Yeah, a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic, a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder, and a quarter, not a quarter, I'm saying a quarter, a half, y'all. A half a teaspoon, that's what I have, of garlic, half a teaspoon of onion, and a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt. Sorry, my, I guess I was, I don't know what I was thinking. And then we also need a half a teaspoon of yellow mustard. And then we need a half, no, one tablespoon of the W sauce. <laughs> okay, I think I have everything in here except for the barbecue sauce. So we're going to mix this together. It says you don't want to overwork it. You just want to mix it and uh, if it feels like it's not tight enough, you can add a little bit of more of the panko breading. And then we're going to form into about four to six loaves. So I always use my hands on this kind of stuff. So. And in case I didn't tell y'all in the beginning, I have one pound of lean ground beef. I may not have even mentioned that, I'm sorry. I'm gonna add just a little tad, just, just a little bit. That should be good. So, I'm gonna start out, let's see. Almost like, I mean, like little eggs, I guess. I don't know, we will see. I may need to make them bigger, but I'm gonna start out like that, see how many I make. And I wanna try to keep them all pretty close to the same size. And it's, my husband is not home with us tonight, so it's just me and my three kids, so there's four of us. So, this should be plenty. Those all look pretty close to the same size. So just a second while I get my air fryer. Okay y'all, now as I put these in here, it says to make a small indention on the top and we're gonna put um, barbecue sauce inside of them. So, I'm making, oh, here. This piece of bacon. Okay, so I got one. Oh, 
Oh, wait. I think I should spray. It doesn't say to spray, but I'm going to spray. I'm going to spray the bottom of this just because I don't want to take a chance of it sticking. So let's go ahead and put that one in. Okay, y'all. So I'm going to use this little spoon here. It says to spoon it into the little indention and then spread it over the top of the little meatloafs. So that's what I'm doing. So now I'm gonna bring this over here, place it into the air fryer. Okay, I'm gonna set this on 400 for, it said 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes and check them and see. So we're gonna let those start cooking. Okay, y'all, I wasn't sure if they were quite done, so I put them back in for about three more minutes. But when I was setting up the time on here, I actually put it for 12 minutes, but luckily I turned around when nine minutes was left and I was like, whoa, wait a second, that wasn't right. So, um, yeah, I let them go for about three more minutes. I wish I would have only went two. And y'all, I'm going to try these to go along with it. They're cornbread, cornbread swirls. You just put these in the oven and bake for about 14 to 17 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on too. And y'all, I thought I'd show you these. They come out like little rolls of dough. It says to spray a muffin tin and you just put them in there. So I'm waiting on my oven to preheat and then I'll bake these. But I just thought I'd show y'all how they come out. Y'all, I got over there doing something, and I looked over here, and it showed nine minutes. I don't know what I just put in on the video before this. I think they're done now, so I am going to pull these out. I hope I didn't overcook them, y'all. I walked away thinking I set it for two minutes, and then I'm thinking, whoa, this is longer than two minutes, but there they are. Y'all, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all and real with y'all. I was defrosting my meat, and this meat right here was still frozen, so I stuck it in the microwave. I kind of broke it up. And I forgot about it. So I just made those meatloaf ball or patty things with about half of the meat. So <laughs> this meat was supposed to be in there. So we will definitely find out how these taste. Hi. Courtney Nicole, I just made my meatloaf with half the meat. The other half was in the microwave and I just found it. <laughs> Y'all. Today has been a day. <laughs> I can already hear y'all now. <laughs> Probably saying too much processed foods. I know the kids wanted these so bad and I wanted to try it too. So, yes, there will be potatoes and there will be bread and mac and cheese. So, <laughs> yeah, we're getting definitely our carbs for the day. I know. But that's how we're rolling tonight. I'll finish mixing this up. Oh, and by the way, there are those cornbread muffins, y'all. They smell so okay, good. Okay, y'all, here are our mashed potatoes and mac and cheese. The little cornbread biscuit things and our <laughs> our meatloaf they smell good i do think i must have cooked them a tad bit too long and of course i was missing part of the meat but you have those days and today was definitely one of those days so we're about to sit down and eat okay and we'll let Drew, know. what do you think about the food how did you like it you getting full how's the meatloaf huh no he's not huh? no he's been having some issues with um Sometimes it feels like food's getting stuck in his throat. What do you think about the meatloaf? It's good. The meatloaf's good. This is really good. Meat. He likes that. That's really, 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 really He really good. likes that mac and, and cheese. This is really, 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 really good. So it was, <laughs> and he's a potato person, so he loves potatoes. Try those with that mac and cheese. What do you think? It was good. I feel really bad that it didn't have, even though it's missing probably around a quarter, not quite a half, it was like maybe a quarter-ish of the meat. <laughs> 
it's still good. I mean, I think these, I mean, they're really good. And, and that mac these and cheese little, is the I bomb. love, I like these little um, cornbread roll thingies. They're really good. They don't really taste like cornbread. They taste more like bread, though. Did you make them out of a box or did you They make were in a make? can. They're Pillsbury, but the top of it tastes more like cornbread, but the inside is softer. Yeah. Like a biscuit, can but I sweeter. Can, can Adrian wants more mac and cheese. Okay, now let's ask Bryce. What? Okay, Bryce, what do you think? Good. You like that meat? You like the meat? And he actually said it was, you know, soft enough because, you know, he just had his braces, so his mouth is kind of sore today. And I was worried that I might have overcooked it. So it did get a little dark around the top, but it's really not hard though, so it was good. Bryce likes meatloaf balls, so are those good? Are these pretty good? I mean, comparable to the meatloaf balls? I know meatloaf balls not are the same favorite, meat, but the meat's different. Yeah, but it's still good though, right? Yep. Okie dokie. And, and what about you, my Courtney? reaction. I love the, well, I don't really like the meatloaf. I don't, She's really, not a meatloaf I don't like meatloaf that much. Mashed potatoes are good. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish them. I don't know. <laughs> um, and the mac and cheese is so good. And the little rolls are good too. Uh, yeah.